Hi guys, I hope everyone is safe at home uh, during this period. So I thought of doing uh, this video for, for you guys while <laughs> I, I'm at home because um, you know one, one of the, like the most popular questions we've always been getting is uh, uh, you know asking me for advice on you know what's what's the most important thing when when you're buying a diamond or when you're buying an engagement ring so the first few answers i can think of right is to always check the light performance of the diamond now how you can check the light performance of the diamond is by using this scope over here okay so this scope is called the aset scope aset it stands for angular spectrum evaluation tool so it's a very simple tool, but it's really, really useful because what this tool does is it measures the light return. So it measures how much light is coming in and being reflected back out of the diamond and it color codes the light path. And you know, these things are like x-ray goggles, <laughs> okay? So you know, when, when the diamond has any issues or any problems uh, with its light return, right? it would all be revealed over here so you know whenever uh, i always strongly recommend that whenever you're buying a diamond you must always check it under this uh, aset scope okay so what i'm gonna do next is i'll show you some diamonds um, under the aset scope as well and i'm gonna show you like what to look out for and you know how it would appear under different lighting conditions so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you uh, this diamond I have here. Now it's a 0.37 carat uh, e-color VS1 and it's GIA certified. Uh, it's, uh, it's a GIA certified triple excellent diamond. So meaning the cut, polish and symmetry, they're all excellent. And in fact, uh, a lot of jewelers, whether it's online or offline, they do typically sell this as an ideal cut because on the GI certificate, uh, everything is excellent, which is the highest grade attainable. Uh, and usually what the, they'll do is they'll like to show it to you under the hearts and arrows scope to show you the hearts and arrows patterning. But the problem is uh, a lot of consumers, they don't really know what to look out for in the hearts and arrows scope. And you know what, they see the hearts and arrows patterning, they will usually, you know, just think that, oh, this must be a really good diamond. But uh, before I move on to that, let me show you the hearts of this piece. Okay, so here are the hearts image of the diamond, okay? Now, a lot of uh, people who, who are not very familiar with the diamond, uh, they would automatically, you know, see this and say, Oh, wow, look at those beautiful hearts patterning. And they, they would just assume that, oh, this is a hearts and arrows diamond because they see those eight heart shapes over there and they think that oh this must be a really good piece and and to to a layman you know this this does look nice this does look beautiful with the eight hearts okay so what i'm going to show you next is i'm going to change the diamond into a true hearts and arrows and this is how a true hearts and arrows should look like okay uh, let me just adjust it straight to the middle okay so what you should see is the eight symmetrical hearts where you know it's a full heart shape they're all in the same size they all look symmetrical and you know it's only like this when you see this can you call a diamond a true hearts and arrows okay now besides the hearts and arrow scope uh, remember the ASAP scope I mentioned to you earlier that is to see the light return so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how the diamond looks like under the ASAP scope and how they compare each other side by side so here are both of the diamond under the ASAP scope so the diamond on the left it's the super ideal cut and the diamond on the right is the ideal cut and i have to remind you that both diamonds they are both triple excellent where the cut polish and symmetry they're all excellent as well so on the certificate the quality is exactly the same okay so under the aset scope this is how it looks like now first you notice that the super ideal cut on the left it has those like blue arrows those blue areas represents contrast in the diamond so contrast meaning uh, later under 
under a uh, direct white light setting, right? These blue arrows will become black color to create that beautiful contrast patterning. Now, those red areas you see, right? These red areas, it represents strong light return, where light is coming in and being reflected back out. So this is where the brightness of the diadiamond comes from. And you notice there's some green areas, right? Green represents weaker light return. So green, they are still light return, but it's much weaker. Right? So what you want is majority for it to be red rather than green. And right now, uh, if you notice there's a little bit of like black color areas, right? These black areas represent light leakages where you know light is literally going straight through the diamond so these light leakage areas are literally like glass windows where you know you're literally seeing straight through the diamond and the reason why they are black in color right now is because we are seeing through the diamond into the black background okay now one interesting thing is if you remember how we are seeing the diamond is directly from the front from a 90 degrees view now, when you're wearing a diamond ring, right, on the hands, your hands is always moving. So, you know, you're not just going to see the diamond from the straight front like this, but you're also going to see it at, you know, tilted angles, something like these, right? Now, for the ideal cut on the right, okay, when you focus your eyes on the ideal cut on the right, you notice when I start moving the diamond left and right. Uh, notice those light leakages, it enlarges, it gets bigger, right? Uh, even when I move it this way, top or at the bottom, at tilted angles, these light leakage areas, they get exaggerated, right? It gets much larger, okay? Now, when you look at the diamond on the left, the super ideal cut, now when I tilt it left, when I tilt it right or up and down, you notice it still has that strong light return. Okay, see see the big difference? This is why, you know, I always say <laughs> the ASAT scope, they are like X-ray goggles. Any problem with the diamond, any light leakages, it would easily be revealed over here. Right now, I'm showing the diamond under a white light setting, okay? So white light setting is similar to those um, office lighting or outdoor cloudy daylight. Uh, it's to see the brilliance and the brightness of the diamond. Now, remember all those red areas you see earlier under the ASAT scope, which is the strong light return? Notice they are all white, bright areas okay so for the super ideal cut first you notice uh, the beautiful eight distinct black arrows so these were you know those blue areas those contrast areas uh, under the a set earlier and between the arrows you notice how bright it is and how white the diamond is these were where all the strong light return was which would which is what makes the diamond really really bright and sort of white as well now the ideal cut on the right okay you notice first uh, it doesn't have those eight distinct black arrows right because it didn't have those blue areas uh, under the a set so because of that it doesn't give the diamond any nice contrast which makes the diamond look very uh, bland like very like a uh, white wash now remember the light leakages in the middle area notice they are all black in color that's because we are seeing straight through the diamond right now okay and you know right now we are seeing the diamond directly from the front at like a 90 degrees angle now when i start tilting the diamond left and right right uh, you remember those light leakages areas just now look at how much it enlarges under the ideal cut notice when i tilt it left and right it enlarges and and, and it makes these really dark and black large spots in the diamond especially at tilted angles okay now let me show you something more interesting when i tilt the diamond even more let's say a little bit more towards like a uh, 50 60 degrees angle now you notice the ideal cut look at the edges on the ideal cut notice the edges that dark semicircle remember those green areas those weaker light return at those same areas notice it becomes darker at tilted angles right so it makes the edges of the diamond 
look very dark, right? And this also causes the diamond to look smaller than it is because you know the edges are not as bright at tilted angles. Now, if you look at the super ideal cut, right? You notice how bright it is. Look at that full white circle, right? It's a full brightness everywhere throughout the diamond, uh, and you don't get to see, you know, that you can get to see the outline very, very clearly. Uh, whereas for the ideal cut, you notice all the edges, it looks very dark, okay? And you and it doesn't really give that full shape as well. So, so that's also why, you know, when a diamond is cut with a high brightness, right? It does give the diamond a larger appearance as well. Because the whole diamond is bright, the whole diamond is really, really white. And that's also why, you know, we always focus so much on the light return, because this is what you want for your diamond. Now the next lighting here is under a soft direct light. So these kind of soft direct light is similar to those uh, LED lights, orange halogen lights, which is like found in shopping malls or restaurants, right? Uh, and um, this is where you get to see the beautiful large fire, those really, really colorful rainbow flashes, right? Uh, where you notice, you know, just a slight tail of the diamond, you get to see those like blue, green, orange, yellow, rainbow flashes right and you also get to see what we call that scintillation effect scintillation is when i start moving the diamond they call it like the dance of fire right uh, all these like bling effect throughout the diamond so for the super ideal cut on the left you notice you get to see those large chunky flashes from like the table towards the middle of the diamond to even like the edge of the diamond so even at you know like tilted angles such as these you get those to see those like really really colorful flashes throughout the diamond now the ideal cut on the right okay you notice yes uh, there is still some fire going on some some flashes but you notice it's very very limited to certain areas only right and uh, you notice the light leakages somewhere in the middle that the black color circle notice there's no fire coming out uh, from those areas at all uh, and also if you notice the edges of the, the diamond remember like the green uh, edges right the green semicircles notice those areas it looks much darker as well and you don't really get to see any fire coming out from that area as well right uh, this is because you know these light leakage areas are literally like uh, what you call dead zones right because you know uh, when where there are light leakages yeah, there's like no light reflection coming out from the area so no matter what kind of lighting condition you see the diamond under whether it's like white light strong light spotlight or sunlight those light leakage areas uh, it would never perform all right here i have the diamonds again under a white light setting okay so right now i'm filming them under the gia diamond dog okay and uh over here you can tell which is the super ideal cut which is the same position on the left here and when you compare it with the ideal cut here you notice same thing look at those dark areas here right so this one is more like a uh, casual lighting effect under a uh, white fluorescent light so you can see how it looks like under these kind of like everyday lighting effect in real life okay and if you notice look at this circle here we, uh, this is we also call that the ring of death <laughs> okay because this ring of death area there's like you know absolutely no brightness coming out from it at all because these were where all the light leakages were at and you know for the super ideal cuts right those true hearts and arrows you can see those beautiful distinct eight black arrows patterning and you can just see how white and how bright it is so here I have the diamond under a direct light setting which is similar to uh, LED orange halogen lights which is the typical lightings you see in like shopping malls, restaurants or ballroom. Now this is where you really get to see the fire and scintillation of the diamond where you get to see all those 
really really colorful rainbow flashes especially with the super ideal cut on the left where the arrows are flaring up now if you notice the ideal cut on the right it looks very sort of like whitewashed right uh, that's because um, when the diamond doesn't have contrast and it doesn't have strong light return you won't get to see all these colorful uh, flashes and right now when I put the diamond from a further distance you notice wow <laughs> if the arrows it, it all lights up and and you know it is these large chunky fire which makes a diamond really really eye-catching especially when you see them at further distance all right so i hope this video helps and that's also why we focus uh, so much on the cut because you know it just affects the entire beauty of the diamond what you want is you know your diamond to perform under all different lighting conditions under white lights you want it to be very brilliant very bright and under direct lighting such as these you want it to be very fiery and very scintillating so thank you for watching this video and do subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, for more videos such as these.